Okay, so I, <coughs> my method was different. I took a fax public bus, and went from one place to another. So I'll try to show you something which is mostly in your own backyard or in something which unofficially we could maybe call Greater Turkmenistan when the Seljuks and so on were ruling the country. Early history, you, you heard it several times, so practically the art which appeals me most is really, oh sorry, the early one, is there a pointer somewhere? Does it have a pointer? Yes, it should have. Up there, okay, okay, that's hardly visible, yeah, not at least in this light. So we talk about pretty early years, and unfortunately there came Mongols, but after a total destruction, factically, they realized that they could have a, had a much more pleasant life, and they adopted the culture, and for example, Turkish artistic apogees is actually under the Mongol supervision, they, they wisely left Turkish sultans to, to sort of semi-rule themselves. While in Iran, it came much later, practically after this date. I'm a crystallographer, so I will use the language of symmetry, which was surprisingly mentioned here very, very little. And uh, the reason is, as it stands here, all the ornaments are constructed using geometry. Either we induce symmetry by our construction or, uh, sorry, by, by our wish, or it results from our construction. So it is the symmetry which actually describes mutual disposition and orientation of design elements. Fundamental operations were mentioned. They are rotation, sorry, oops, I'm all the time making. Rotation axes, planes of reflection, and glide planes. For example, this is from Kaiseri. You have a fourfold rotation axis here. You rotate 90 degrees always in every step, and after four steps you are back. Or you have, these are two different pictures put together, threefold rotation axis, for example, here. If we talk about mirror, uh, sorry, further rotation is very nicely in Bursa. So you have practically an eightfold rotation if you take the wa on the uh, perimeter of the picture and disregard the text. Mirror symmetry, again from Bursa, you have a very nice mirror plane in between and the text is reflected into itself, similar on this smaller one. And you can have also rarely mentioned other types of symmetry, homothety or similarity, which is simply these was or wows are getting larger and larger. You can draw line along the top and line along here and any other part of it. Simply, this is a similarity, which is a very nice thing, but rarely used. What are we dealing with? People normally simply don't think about it. There are only 17 problem-free combinations of symmetry elements in plane, no more. So it's a freedom within rules. It's almost like to live in a state. You have, you have laws, you are free, in some states at least, but you simply have to obey laws. So there are no other combinations. But plane, as such, has one surface, and there is no top and bottom, there is no you can't go to the other side of it, you are simply in it. But what if you can go to the other side of it? And actually much of 
Islamic ornamental art has two sides, top and bottom face. So you must have operations which bring you from top face to the bottom face. So there are so-called layer groups. There are many more of them, I think 80. Here we talk about two-dimensional creations. In one dimension, you have friezes or bands just along one direction, like here. And there are only seven groups of, seven types of combinations. This had no color. If we want to make it nice, so we can eventually con uh, connect a symmetry operation, for example, a reflection plane, with changing a color. I reflect and I change from white to black or from red to green, yeah? So you get so-called dichroic, two-colored groups, or you can, if you have three-fold axis, you can have, I don't know, white, red, blue, right? white, red, blue. So you have three chromatic or more polychromatic groups of symmetry. So all that is Islamic art, actually. Plain groups of symmetry, here are the schemes. These are two-fold rotation axes, three-fold rotation axes, six-fold, four-fold rotation. The thick lines are mirror standing like this. And the dashed lines are glide planes again standing like this. It looks forbidding, but if, if the color pen arrive, yes, there is something here, I believe. Poof. We can try to see that it's not so horrible. <laughs> here is one of these groups. And if I start with a little element, it is sitting on no element of symmetry, so by itself it is asymmetric. It's four times rotated. We have to put it everywhere, unfortunately. I'm killing my own talk, but I was rather surprised that it was very little attention paid to it. And, okay, I will just put the one which is inside and one which is inside. And now what about this place? There is a mirror, I have to reflect it. Yes, and then I rotate it. And let's look what else. This is a mirror, this is a mirror, this is a mirror, if you use two or so elements, often the third come immediately, automatically out, yeah? I used this and the rotation, and I generated already this. This is the unit cell, if we call it. That's the unit volume. Everybody was talking about this for design, and then without talking much about symmetry, flipping it, and so on. Yes. We call it asymmetric unit. And there are four of them here, you see. So that way, or it could be actually even smaller, but let's. So this is it, and we can test our glide plane. Our glide plane should reflect. It should be somewhere here. But we are supposed to move it halfway, so from being a bit below this axis, it is reflected and moved halfway just below this axis, and reflected and moved again. So that's the glide plane. Okay, so I killed some of my time, but I hope it was useful. So that's how it works, and I am very sorry that I have no exercise because you can see 
that it's not only designing how the element looks like, it can be a beautiful ornament, but also how you dispose them for the customer in space. Yeah, so it's a very good way of simply examining these possibilities, for example, from lowest threefold symmetry to the highest, or even sixfold, and which one will be nicer for a given type of ornament. Okay, this I did practically on the board. And here is an example. It's this guy's lying on the mirror plane and on the mirror plane this way and on the two-fold axis, yeah? This element is lying on a four-fold axis and this little only on a mirror plane. So that's how it looks like. It's a nice ornament made of bricks. I love the early pre-glazed stage as it was already mentioned because, oh sorry, as you see from the dates, the technology for making glazed bricks is rather late, it's about that time. So first they were playing with uh, light and shade of the sun and it is extremely nice from the artistic point of view. He, you, Carol was already showing something about Harakan and other people too. I thought that they were so lost in the middle of nowhere, nobody will know about them, but apparently I was wrong. So here they are. The Iranian government restored what they could, and they were extremely intelligent. They didn't try to so-called reconstruct. They left what was there, and the rest was just sort of fixed, and they put it on a platform, or platform around it. Unfortunately, several weeks after my visit came a pretty strong earthquake, so I really don't know how much is left. So this may be the last good photographs of it. And here is a nice pattern. Here we have a problem. Is it a freeze? Yes, it is a freeze, but if you look at it, you have elements coming, so it's a freeze which is a cutout of two-dimensional pattern and the pattern is reconstructable. That's one point which one should always think about. Here is another one. There are no mirror planes whatsoever, just fourfold axes here and here. Another and here we are first time seeing something what is, look, they couldn't, they were just simulating it, they couldn't do it, but this looks like going under this, yeah? So it's over and under. This is a layer which has top, you see, and the bottom which you don't see, but it exists from the construction. So simply, instead of a mirror plane like this, for example, you have a two-fold axis which lies in this plane and flips this side into this like that. So not reflecting, but flipping. So they are simply horizontal. So we have a changed approach. Here we have six-fold axis and everything is in one plane and no mirrors. Oops. And here, again, it's a two-sided problem. You see, top, bottom, and so on. I made statistics. You can make nice statistics because essentially uh, that uh, hunt for 17 playing groups in Alhambra, uh, sorry to say, stupidity, they really don't exist. They are trying everything possible, fals falsifying half of the things to get them. Really, the question is different. Which playing groups the culture liked and which it never or rarely used? That's the question to answer everywhere. 
in every case. So here are simply, okay, we have no time to look at it. I put simply threefold groups at 60 degrees, uh, quadratic at 90 degrees, hexagonal at 180, and uh, orthorhombing as such with, with twofold axes at 180, just to have them separated. Percentage I made like that because if you make it regular, then 2% are practically invisible, and most percentages are spread in that region, so I made it sort of... I actually cheated, took a logarithmic paper, and simply started at some point of it and made a scale. It's a, it's a visual scale for visual operation. Okay, Seljuk minarets have to be seen from very far, so you have very beautiful patterns, and most of them are actually tetragonal with fourfold axes. Here it is, and here it is, and you have mirrors also. So very beautiful, so you can see from simple plain grip, uh, bricks, you can get fantastic answers. I'm probably getting behind, so here is another one from Eastern Iran, which is about this date, and again, actually, is fourfold. What is very conspicuous are not fourfolds, they are twofold axes between, like such. Here you have fourfold, here you have fourfold, here is twofold, twofold in between, here is the fourfold, like on this. It's actually it's similar, but it has mirrors. And uh, why it doesn't work? This one from the same caravanserai, the beauty is actually this group here. So, if we had more time, we could follow it, but we don't. For example, mirror planes are running this way. Yeah, these are mirror planes. And, okay, a glide plane, very nice. Look, look the orientation. This flips here, back here. Here, so that's a nice glide plane, everybody can see. What about Turkey? If you go to Sivas, okay, this long name is here, you, it has a sort of t tower or tambour or whatever, and around you have the same scheme. Old Seljuks were extremely happy with swastikas. If somebody can answer why, I heard the idea of something against evil eye, but one thing, I mean, probably they brought it where from the whole uh, Turkmenic nations came, somewhere from, is it Altai or whatever? Yes. So simply, therefore, it was rather close contact with China where it was very common and so on, so probably I was very surprised once in Norilsk. Uh, uh, one of the very few intelligent guys was collecting material from the local tribes, which are mostly Ugrofinic, and voila, there were pieces with swastikas again, all the way to the north of Siberia. Yeah, yeah. so simply here are examples. Octagon, a sort of eightfold, but still it is. And here is fourfold. There are no mirror planes because swastikas are killing it. Also, no mirror planes here. So it's practically P4, each of that. Next came the glaze. So in Konya, you have a series of designs. Now you can see examples. You have the same symmetry but patterns are more and more complicated. So here you have two-fold axes, six-fold axes. Three-fold axes are these triscalions, as they call them, three-fold swastikas. Here, sorry to glue it just like that, you have different density with the same plane group. So one plane group, it doesn't mean you have the same pattern, yes? You can have different patterns depending where people put, where in the playing group, people put different elements. 
So here you have those triskelions separated. Here, if you see it, it's a part of a of hexagonal rosette. So that's all Seljuk art. Here is something quite different from Konya. It's P4. It would be very highly symmetrical, but swastikas are killing all Miller planes. You simply get this pattern. P4, nothing more. Beautiful glazed. Yeah, we have no time to go into this mihrab and analyze each individual pattern, but it would be a nice, rich field for playing groups of symmetry. Here is a freeze pattern. And now, if you can see, for example, this triangle, it has a two-fold axis like that. You can flip it this way. Yeah? And, but what about this way? If I take this arm, let's say, this one, it's flipped into this one. And then that one is flipped into this one and this one. But from top and bottom, you can see it's not a glide plane. It's a, they, we call it screw axis. They are not reflected. They are rotated 180 degrees. So that's one of the freezes. Another one is simpler. As it stands, central Anatolia is a land of geologically young volcanoes, which yielded the black basalt, which was used practically universally for all those hunts along the way, and madrasas and mosques in Kaiseri and so on. So, and mostly people have freezes rather than two-dimensional patterns. This one is two-dimensional. And you would think, actually, quickly, that it's something of this P4GM. But from the, how it is bevelled, cut, it actually is reduced only to one without mirrors. This was amply discussed by a professor, I don't remember, sorry, the name. Yeah, so this is from Kaiseri, at the edge of the town, more or less. And it is, again, you could think this is a mirror, but not, look, this is up and down, so instead of a mirror, there is a two-fold axis which flips. Yeah, and instead of, <coughs> look at this. Like that, like that, like that, like that, like that. So you would think there is a glide plane. No, again, from interlacing, it, instead of glide plane, you have again that screw axis, and so on. So uh, much of Islamic art is uh, interlaced art. So practically just going to plane groups is not enough. Uh, is actually layer group. <coughs> this, we saw that in Harakan. So we saw this one in Harakan. Another beauty, that one has actually a lot of mirror planes. This, this sits on six-fold, this sits on two-fold, this sits on three-fold. There are no elements which are sitting on, in a so-called general position outside symmetry elements. Here, all sit on symmetry elements. And it gives them their shape. Yeah? You cannot sit on threefold axis and not having a threefold shape. You must have it, so. Okay, just, I have no time the way how they dressed a circular column by a plain group <coughs> in beautiful relief. And what about this? Have you seen it? That's the same like we saw in Konya, the blue one. 
So I don't know, 100 kilometers apart, once it was made in glazed fired brick, and this is cut into basalt rock. All this is carved, yeah? This was carved simply nicely with a little hammer and adds and What about this one? It looks very symmetrical, so why do I show it? Because look at this little star, and the same again, and again. It's all oriented the same way downwards with the tip. You never have it upwards. So the whole pattern has no symmetry elements which would change like this, reflection or axis. All is, we call it polar, yeah? It has a North Pole and South Pole, let's say. So it's a polar pattern, and symmetry is limited to the moving one direction. All is, the, as I say, all is carved in the rock, hard rock. What about this one? It's very complicated, but you can probably fancy, I can't see from here, uh, the pentagon facing a pentagon, they look exactly the same. Whatever element, oof. this one, for example, facing exactly. So you would think it's a mirror symmetry. Yes, it is, except here. Look, this pentagon is facing there. It's also, it's also, and they changed inside. If you compare this side with this side, so the whole thing is asymmetric because of the center. Why they did it, I don't know. But the whole thing, this was, it's not horizontal, that's simply standing, but it would be reduced in size. So they made a thick, almost symmetric, but asymmetric pattern. You have to ask them why they did it. And many of them are like this, it's pretty complicated and they're full of mistakes. And we again, Jean Marg almost killed my talk, but let's hope something is there. So the same Maraga, anyway, half of the world has this, my picture I made. We start with Penrose. Uh, you complain somebody that actually always Penroses are very quick and it remains a mystery, so what is actually Penrose? People were showing how he was putting together pentagons, but that's only half of the story. How many elements do we have? We have stars, half stars, whatever, fifth, fifth star, where I see one from here, it's here, and so on. But we don't have a pentagon. We have three pentagons. Uh, this picture is a simplification which is really uh, done a lot of damage because these sides are not straight. It's like key and lock, key and lock. So key zero has a lock bar zero, key one has a lock bar one and two also. So a, a side which is called zero cannot match even if it is the same length with one or two. It has to match with opposite zero. So it's like this. It's a much more complicated picture. Some people made it really geometrically, a small base and protrusions, key and lock. And that's the true nature of Penrose. That only with that it is non-periodic, infinitely aperiodic. Otherwise, it is periodic. If you don't put those keys on it, you can make it periodic. Uh, the other form, he has three forms, is art, uh, darts, 
like small arrows, points on an arrow, and kites, kites like boys are flying in the air. And this is the cartwheel, which everybody is showing and working. So you have all these groupings, and you have something which Conway called worms. So these are Conway worms, like this, and also like this, and so on. And imagine this People put a nice decagonal rosettes there, but that's a cheat. This has no decagonal symmetry at all, as you see from what is put here. So we are back to Maraga. I have no time to show you. Also, the under, we, we drew a complete underlying pattern as well, but let's concentrate on the big one. So here is Maraga, and two edges of the building are here and here. So that's one panel. What do we see in this chaos? We see primary elements, which is pentagon. I call it butterfly. There's butterfly here the old gentleman have. And I put these two elements together because it makes it much easier a romb, a marked romb. And the whole thing is like that. But what about this? And about this? These are secondary elements, not primary. If you take this guy, how does it come about? The real form is this, with two lozenges, one butterfly and three pentagons. But now look at it, look at these boundaries. You can take your pentagon, rotate one period, let's say, and that marches again. Everything marches. Rotate next, everything marches. These old guys found it. They knew it. They found out that you can <laughs> rotate the inside of it at will, and it will always march. So they made this. And that's, the rot that's after all rotations put on top of one another, they made this. What about this? Again, it's not emptying it, the opposite. It is here. And it is filled by butterfly, 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 pentagon, pentagon, and a romb. It's just a part of time. And again, you can rotate it around, take this and rotate and rotate and rotate and rotate, and they found it out. And after all rotations, they replaced it with this beauty. Yeah? So these are secondary elements. Or in some variations, they just emptied it. But that's the secondary operation, primary operation of something, if you call it Maraga Penrose, is keeping these things in, this and that. And again, I am afraid even I was not playing completely. Because, what is the relationship? Extremely simple. You have thin lines, Penrose, you just take Penrose, you inscribe a smaller pentagon into Penrose's pentagon, and you do it for, for, for all pentagons, and you get Maraga tiling. That's in principle, that's, that's, that's really what happens. And in that process, you inscribed, you inscribed, you inscribed. Here you will have a problem, because it is two pentagons. You can see this is starts and pentagon and this pentagon, which are partly overlapping. Uh, you would say it's not in Penrose, but if you, 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 you can cut this and flip, having only half, and then you need something <laughs> here, and, or you cut and flip, and then you need something here, and in the process, this overlapping of two pentagons is potentially hidden in original Penrose. It is there because you have a choice. You can do this or you can do that, where you place your, your star. So 
they recognized it and they used these lozenges and this is practically two partly overlapping pentagons. So it is that and you could really have markings for Malaga as well. Oh, what's happening? Okay. I played with it long ago, 1990s, and I said this is extremely complicated. Let's simplify it. And I simply took centers of all pentagons and joined them, and I got something like this. And in this, these are the two overlapping pentagons, so I get this, these are the centers. And suddenly, two, three years later after publication of this, people found it in Top Copy Scroll. Those old guys did the same. How much they used it, nobody knows, because nobody found ever a building where under the pattern, when it fell off, one could see this. Some people thought that they found the principle, but uh, it's a possibility. So this styling simply has been known. Lou tried to say that it's his own discovery, but simply he, he just opened my paper and there was a picture like that. Okay, so this was invented just to try to make it simplified, but in a way, it's very difficult to invent markings for this, which there should be markings on it. And now we go back to Malaga. This is our pen road we were showing, and this is Malaga when we make it uh, nice. So here we have simply one-to-one -one correspondence. These are these, these are these, these are here, this is here, and so on. So it's practically my Ah, oh, sorry, sorry, I keep forgetting. Yeah. In normal things you have, sorry, you have unit cell, and it simply repeats like bricks. You just put it next to one another, and that's it. So, uh, what, what, what? Okay, we are here. Uh, it was Aman, that strange guy, who realized that if you put, for example, I put through these points of pentagons, my lines, then I actually get, not a lattice, uh, sort of crazy lattice with two different spacings. If this is one, then this is a complicated derivative of square root of five, yeah? It's not square root of five, it's a derivative. So, and you can see how they go, thin one and thicker, and they are not periodic. And eventually, if you have this and this, uh, the thing in between can flip. Yeah, the thick one, thin one, thin one, thick one. It happens also in natural quasicrystals, exactly the same. So these are man bars, they didn't think about it, but in Granada, in Alhambra, the actually Aman bars were the main tool of creation. You have them so strongly shown. Of course, there are five systems of them, yeah? So that's Aman bars in the Western Islam. And the other thing is inflation. So here you have a play of inflation, deflation. This is the original size, and here is deflation, and here you have inflation. And it fits nicely, you can see how nicely it sits on either lozenge or something which was a lozenge before they make it circular. What's the time? Because I'm afraid I'm... Okay, just 10 minutes. Just 10 minutes, whoop. Okay. So, okay, there will be only something. So I'll jump over this. You know that actually, or you were told already, that only this part is crazy crystal. The rest, as you see, is simply autorhombic. 
here is the unit cell origin, here is the point, here would be a point here, and that's the center. That's a so-called CMM space group, so Lou was wrong, this is not a quasi crystal, quasi crystal is just what is inside the blue rosette. And it is drawn here, and exactly as you see, interestingly, in Malaga they replaced it by the rotational pentagon, here they did not. In Malaga they left some of this, for example, this one here, unreplaced, they replaced it by blank. In Malaga, they replaced these down with these beautiful stars. They left, ah, damn it. <laughs> you should be hanging her. They left it simply <laughs> empty. Okay. Uh, okay, I have, I wanted to stop on Karatai. The only remark is that actually easiest is to compare Karatai actually with that Darbe Imam, if you look at these which were emptied, so here they were replaced by those, but the third one was left unreplaced. It's difficult to find, yeah? And this one has been replaced in Maraga and also in Karatai. But this one replaced in Malaga, was not replaced in Karatai. That's where the numbers are. So they were, those people were playing in their, with their possibilities and they understood the properties of the pattern. Yeah? They knew what they were doing. This is not just some kind of blind play. Okay, Sivas. Probably the whole story of Malaga may be started with something like that. They started and you have those butterflies and so on. It looks terribly like the origin point of the uh, cartwheel Maraga tiling. And what about this? This was, nobody touched it better. It looks pretty horrible, but really this is a Maraga tiling. Here you have I, we have no time to go in detail. Pentagons, you have to go on the second boundary, not, not immediately. So here you have pentagons. Here you have a nice lozenge with those markings. And what are we missing? A butterfly, for example, here. Again, a bit thicker butterfly. They just put these. So except for the ends where they really... Uh, messed up, especially this one. The rest, the body, is Maraga, except this was vertical in Maraga, it became horizontal, and this was horizontal top in Maraga. It became, they simply took Maraga and put it like that. So I was extreme, I love this pattern, and I was overjoyed when I managed to understand it. This is not, this is periodic, but I hope you love it as much as I do. Yeah? It's the same elements practically as they were used just in the previous. It's supposedly Ali two or three times around. It's a Shia region, so. Okay, periodic. Okay, this is the pattern. But interlacing, yeah? So instead of CMM, you really have C222, okay, you have two-fold axis standing here and here, no, yes, but the rest are axes which are lying flat instead of standing, so you can turn the pattern top to the bottom and so on, so it's a change. Iznik, okay, I wanted to talk. So, Iznik, if we go very quickly, appears around 1470, but this was mostly ceramic for the, uh, whatever, cups, plates, jars, and so on. Tiles appeared later when uh, Sultan started building huge mosques and they needed hundreds and thousands of tiles. So that was the 
in my eyes, the nicest time of it. Uh, we better go. So here, the blue, okay, the glaze of stone, the, the ceramic made of ground quartz, gla ground glass of special composition, and a bit of white clay. And that was fired to be a brick. Glaze was, of course, uh, silica, but with some soda, which is sodium, natrium, and always lead compounds. So don't eat from Iznik ceramics. And why? Because first it was melting the glaze at lower temperature. Secondly, it, it uh, gave more transparent glaze. And third, they say, when you cool things, you have thermal expansion. They shrink. And uh, so they, they say they achieved that the glaze and bottom were shrinking about the same rate. Otherwise, you get it cracked. Yeah? You have this craquelure on the... So that's why they did it. Colors. Blue is cobalt. It's cobalt with aluminum. It's a spinel, actually, if somebody knows. Uh, turquoise is, you can read it, copper and tin. Purple, they say just manganese based, nobody ever said more. Green is from the combin, it's not on this picture, on another one, from iron and copper. And what is beautiful is the coral red, which was actually iron rich clay from Armenia. And this lasted only for about 25 years because then in a war they lost Armenia to Persians. And that was the end of Armenian bowl. At least that's my interpretation. Artist historians have all kinds of very complicated ones. I think this is a simple <laughs> one. They lost the source in the war. So it stopped. I hope you like it. Yes? And this is the later product. So you can see the color changed. Okay. We, we, uh, I will come with the conclusion at the first. So there are very limited amount of space groups which are frequent. These are all, but it is CM, MCM, this and this. For example, this is very rare with glide plane, just one case. So we just run it. You have how, five minutes now? Not bad enough, we're finished. Finished? Okay. Tell the audience whether they want to leave. That's a good one. That's the end. Thank you.